I hear that uh, there was a problem with the venue. Um, it's just to depict the kind of challenges we have in this country that you always struggle to even secure a venue. I'm told that most of the hotels have been threatened and have been put on notice that if you are going to tolerate the triple C, and in particular, Mr. Chamisa, uh, in his programs, there will be trouble. So I must apologize because we're supposed to start right on time. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens, I come to you on this wonderful afternoon to deliver my statement following the erroneous, criminal, illegal, ZEC announcement of a false result that confirms Mr. Mnangagwa as the leader of our country. I must say that fellow citizens, fellow Zimbabweans, you voted and you voted overwhelmingly for change even against all odds. Something that has never happened in the history of our country, that you are forced to embark on night vigils as you wait to cast your vote. But I would like to thank all of you, citizens of Zimbabwe and the citizens of the world, particularly the citizens of Zimbabwe, you showed resilience, patience, commitment, and calmness, even in the face of unparalleled provocation. I'd like to thank the many Zimbabweans who sacrificed a lot in resources, particularly from the diaspora, South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, and from across the whole world, to just come and cast your vote. You carried this campaign. Colleagues in the diaspora were and continue to be the source of our funding. You carried our budget and we're so proud that you provided the resources for the polling agents, for the polling processes, and even for our own campaign. Thank you for your commitment. Fellow citizens and citizens of the world, we stand here in the aftermath of a highly, highly contested election, of an election that poll observers from across the board, all observer missions without exception, have rightly described as an election that is so damaged in reputation and that is so fraudulent in characterization that falls short beneath the requirements of the Zimbabwean constitution, the electoral laws, and the guidelines of our regional, continental, and global bodies. However, despite all these obstacles and impediments, these abuses, this election also unleashed a wonderful moment, a surge in resilience and hope from you, the Zimbabwean people. Some of you walked for dozens of kilometers. Some of you waited outside the polling stations for dozens of hours and often without food or water. Some of you braved illegal intimidation and threats that no free person should have been subjected to or could endure. I also want to particularly note that one Zimbabwean died in the queue as he waited to vote in Warren Park. May he so rest in peace. I honor that legend. It must never happen in a proper democracy that a person would perish on account of wishing and wanting to exercise their vote. But guess what? You endured, particularly in Arare, in Mulawayo, and in Manikaland, areas and regions that are perceived to be a stronghold. Voting was suppressed. They didn't want you to vote. In the rural areas where they were voting, they were forcing them and intimidating them, commanding them to vote for ZANU-PF or first death. That command voting is illegal. That command voting shall be challenged. I can tell you of Nyanga North, where you had over 3,500 assisted voters. That has never happened. ZANU-PF had their own primary elections. There was not a single assisted voter in that primary election. And guess what? 5,000 people voted. Now, over 15,000 people voting, but 3,500 assisted voters. Why are they assisted voters? Because they were forced to say, go and tell those who are conducting the polling that you are not able to 
read or write and you can't vote for yourself so that you we vote for you we don't trust you those votes are votes that would ordinarily have gone to the alternative must say in a nutshell what i've said ladies and gentlemen the election process in zimbabwe was shamelessly flawed violated the constitution of zimbabwe as well as the electoral laws of our of our republic there was therefore an illegality and criminality in the conduct of ZEC and all the polling officers and officials that were involved. The election process was fraught with unprecedented illegalities, irregularities, and encyclopedic opaqueness and forces of darkness, particularly fuzz 